हेलो एवरी वन आई एम दीपक फ्रॉम उड़ान क्लास टेन रैपिड रिविजन क्लास टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑन अ टॉपिक दैट इज लाइफ प्रोसेस दिस इज पार्ट वन ऑफ दिस टॉपिक वेर इन विल डिस्कस अबाउट द न्यूट्रिशन एंड ह्यूमन डाइजेशन लेट अस स्टार्ट अवर डिस्कशन सो देन वॉट इज लाइफ प्रोसेस सी द प्रोसेस इन विच द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स परफॉर्म देर maintenance activities that is the day to day activities like digestion respiration excretion and the flow of the uh, pumping of the blood by the heart so all those processes we call it as a life processes so diffusion insufficient to meet the oxygen requirements of multicellular organisms as you know in unicellular organisms like amoeba simple diffusion can make their the day to day activities but multicellular organisms like complex organism who, who have evolved with more cells then those multicellular organisms such as humans they possess very complex body design that means we have specialized organs for everything we have lungs for respiration then we have digestive system for uh, digestion so that is how we have uh, having different body complex body designs and we have for every life process we are having the different uh, organ and organ systems then multicellular organisms are not in direct contact with the outside environment so we whatever it is we have internal only the skin is in contact with the direct environment then how do you tell that the uh, organism is living so on what basis the organisms are said they are uh, living so here we'll discuss about criteria for the living organisms so visible movements you can see such as walking breathing or growing is generally used to decide whether something is alive or not but presence of life process is a fundamental criterion that can be used to decide whether something is alive or not so here the presence of life processes are most important criteria in order to determine whether the living system is alive or not so then what are the outside raw materials used by the organisms see an organism uses outside raw materials mostly in the form of food and oxygen see the only thing our body or human body takes from the outside is food and the oxygen that is air the raw materials required by the organism vary depends upon the complexity of that organism in human beings or any other living being food and oxygen are the basic needs but for aquatic animals there might be some different uh, uh criteria wherein they use the life processes yes so that depends upon the complexity of their org organism how their body design is and in which environment they are staying whether they are in living in terrestrial form or they are living in the aquatic form then what are the essential life processes that are required for maintaining any life so in order to say that any living system is alive or it is undergoing life process it, it should undergo nutrition food respiration respiration wherein it should take exchange of gases transportation here transportation means they are talking about blood then reproduction is this is the thing we'll discuss in the uh, another topic how do organisms reproduce and excretion is a one wherein it is a uh, removal of the waste from the body in all the five this reproduction is not necessarily a uh, essential uh, process life process but first uh, remaining four are the very basic needs then let us start our discussion from nutrition so what is nutrition remember nutrition means food the process of obtaining energy through consumption of food so your body gets energy by consuming food so the process by which organisms they obtain the energy through the consumption of food is called nutrition then the different types of nutrition auto auto means automatic means autotrophic nutrition here you can see auto auto means it prepares its own food so the mode of nutrition or obtaining the food in which an organism prepares its own food is called as an autotrophic nutrition example all green plants see remember plants prepare their own food so they are autotrophic only the plants have the capacity to prepare their own food so green plants and certain blue green algae are the example for autotrophic nutrition 
then how do they prepare food the autotrophic nutrition by a process called as photosynthesis then what is photosynthesis photo means light synthesis means to produce so the production of food with the help of light we call it as photosynthesis in very simple or common way but photosynthesis is a process by which autotrophs autotrophs means to prepare their own food they take in carbon dioxide and water see they take co2 and water from the outside environment and convert them into carbohydrates see carbohydrate means they convert them in the form of glucose in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll remember in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll so only during the day time in the presence of sunlight only they will produce the food so here there is a equation for the photosynthesis that is carbon dioxide 6 co2 plus water in presence of chlorophyll and sunlight it produces the food carbohydrate called as glucose plus six molecules of oxygen so 6 o2 we are and if you write reverse of this it is nothing but the respiration wherein the glucose when it reacted with the oxygen it gives but chlorophyll and uh, sunlight is not necessary just reverse of this will give me the respiration respiration reaction then what are the steps see the three steps you should remember here first one is absorption conversion and reduction see how does the photosynthesis process takes place yes see first it takes place through the process called as absorption so what does it absorb it absorbs light energy from by the chlorophyll that means the energy from the sun the leaves will absorb the light energy by the chlorophyll the chlorophyll is present in the chloroplast of the uh, leaf then how does this conversion of then uh, after absorption of this light energy then it convert that light energy into chemical energy remember conversion of this light energy into chemical energy how by splitting the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen last is reduction reduction means it is reduce removal of oxygen so reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrate that means it will make carbon dioxide co2 into it will remove the carbon dioxide and it will add hydrogen to it that is c6h12o6 carbohydrate is nothing but the glucose in this case then how do the deserted plants they undergo the photosynthesis see desert plants take up carbon dioxide at night remember see they take up carbon dioxide at night and prepare an intermediate It, this intermediate is nothing but the starch which is acted upon by the energy absorbed by the chlorophyll during the day time then what are the raw materials for the photosynthesis See, what, what all raw materials we need in order to undergo photosynthesis see first one is water yes where do we get water this water we get it from the soil for the plants through the xylem tissue in roots and stems carbon dioxide comes in the leaves through the stomata yes remember we need outside raw materials such as water we get it from the soil carbon dioxide comes in the leaves through the stomatal openings yes then you if you just observe this picture you will get to know the cross section of leaf lamina is just a section you can see here so when you just closely observe when you cut the leaf here the middle portion is a midrib and you can see the most middle portion it is having xylem and phloem in it water conducting tissue is a xylem wherein water passes and food conducting tissue is a phloem through which the food will pass to each and every part this together we call it as vascular bundle now if you take this small section and observe under the microscope you will get to know the the, the green dots here those green dots represents the chloroplast the the only thing you should remember in this case is the green dots which represent you can see in the microscopes are the chloroplast they contains the chlorophyll and they are very loosely arranged so you can see the uh, spaces here air space and uh, here guard cells are present in order to protect them then then what are this chloroplast see the green dots like structures you can see a small green dot like structures here in this uh, uh, picture yes and you can see how they are arranged in the form of layers granium stroma so this is the actual diagram of chloroplast in detail but you just remember that the green dot like uh, cell organelles which contains chlorophyll are called as chloroplast then what are stomata see this stomata are found on the back side of a leaf yes a thin uh, transparent plastic layer will be seen 
if you observe that in microscope you can see very the tiny spores those we call it as stomata the one here it is a open and the one here it is a closed stomata see the tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves are called as stomata then what are the main function of this see they are responsible for the exchange of gases so they they are ex they exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide yes they give out oxygen and they take in carbon dioxide then not only the exchange of gases but also the loss of large amount of water in the form of water vapor during transpiration takes place yes then you can see in the stomata there are guard cells which are protecting them so guard cells are nothing but the bean shape you can see the bean shape structure here bean like structure so on the either side of stomata they are present on the either side of the stomata they are called guard cells the first one is a open stomatal pore and the second one is a closed stomatal pore now what is the function of this guard cell so the function of the guard cell is to regulate the opening and closing of stomatal pore so when to open and when not to open is decided by the guard cell then oh, how it causes the opening so how does it is control yes so the guard cell swell when water flows into it so you can see in the this figure here this has swollen now a black dot a black color portion has increased that means the guard cell swell when water flows into it causing the stomatal pore to open similarly the pore closes if the guard cell shrinks you can see in both open and the second figure indicates the open stomatal pore and the first one is the closed stomatal pore next how does this stomata will work in the desert plants see usually in desert plants temperature is usually very high so the stomata are usually close to reduce the loss of water due to transpiration but desert plants are adapted to take up carbon dioxide at night when the stomata are open in desert plants the stomata are open during that time they will take in the carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide take up which are, which is taken up in the night prepares an intermediate compound that is starch which is acted upon by the energy absorbed by the chlorophyll during the day time to prepare their food then in this experiment you can see uh, how the, whether the oxygen is uh, sufficient uh, means the main purpose of this is to know the quantity of carbon dioxide necessary to carry out the photosynthesis so in this experiment we are demonstrating that the sufficient quantity of carbon dioxide you can see the carbon dioxide uh, is necessary to carry out out photosynthesis so here we have seen a glass jar here and a potassium hydroxide is kept here then why is the glass watch with potassium hydroxide placed see here this portion where the potassium hydroxide is placed so the potassium hydroxide is kept to absorb the carbon dioxide so what is the purpose of this uh, potassium hydroxide here in order to absorb the carbon dioxide in the bell jar yes there should not be any carbon dioxide here it will be absorbed by this potassium hydroxide then second question why is the vaseline is smeared at the bottom of the bell jar here at the bottom the entire surface is smeared with the vaseline because in order to make it airtight that means vaseline is applied to make the setup airtight no exchange of gases should takes place then what is the importance of nitrogen see nitrogen is a very essential element used in the photosynthesis during synthesis of proteins and other compounds it is obtained from the soil in the form of inorganic nitrate c <coughs> this nitrogen is uh, this nitrogen is produced in the form of nitrates and nitrites remember the nitrogen is produced in the form of nitrates and nitrites and is taken up by the organic compounds which has been prepared by bacteria from atmospheric nitrogen then what is heterotrophic hetero means depends on others for their food see the type of nutrition in which organisms are dependent on the other organisms see what is heterotrophic nutrition the type of nutrition in which the organisms are dependent usually all animals fungi or some bacteria they are dependent on other organisms for their food requirement we call it as heterotrophic nutrition example animal fungi and bacteria 
then what are saprophytes see organism that break down the food materials outside the body for example fungi like bread molds yeast and mushrooms they what they will do is they create some kind of spongy material or some kind of fungus kind of thing those are nothing but the saprophytes organism that break down the food materials outside the body and then absorb it are called as saprophytes example fungi like bread molds yeast and mushrooms are the common example for saprophytes how do mushrooms obtain uh, the food see organisms like bread molds and mushrooms break down the food materials outside the body what do they do is they break down the food outside the body and then absorb it so you can see the white color patches here so those are nothing but the food what they have produced or the mushrooms that the decaying matter they used to grow then uh, <coughs> holozoic nutrition holo holozoic nutrition in which Uh, organisms take in the whole material and break down it inside their body for example humans or all animals almost all animals are holozoic wherein they take the whole material and break down inside their body by using the specialized uh, digestive system or specialized system for that then what are parasitic see parasitic are nothing but the, the, the nutrition in which the organism derive nutrition from plants and animals without killing them so those are called as parasitic nutrition for example cuscuta orchids ticks lice leeches and tapeworm they will uh, be with the host organism and they try to get the nutrition from them without killing them then what is the difference between saprophytic saprophytic and holozoic see saprophytic nutrition it is a absorptive type of nutrition wherein it absorbs the food holozoic is an injective means ingestion or digestion takes place and food is obtained in liquid state in saprophytes food is obtained in the liquid state here food is taken in the form of solid state or the liquid also but preferably solid digestion is external means outside the body digestion is internal inside the body then how does the nutrition in amoeba takes place the most important here is nutrition in amoeba as you know amoeba is a uh, unicellular organisms with uh, no proper orientation of its structure so it it is having irregular shape no proper body design amoeba takes in the food using temporary finger like extension called as pseudopodia yes you can see the pseudopodia here wherein the small <coughs> gap has been produced wherein the food material the red dot indicates the food it is a normal irregular shape amoeba as soon as the food is identified then it forms a false cavity or a hole like structure that is called as pseudopodia and it forms a food vacuole and it closes and it engulf and where in the cytoplasm the food is get scattered and it leaves so amoeba takes in the food by using a temporary finger like extension called as pseudopodia which fuses over the food particles forming a food vacuole you can see here uh, which, which it has fusion to form a food vacuole inside the food vacuole complex substances are broken down into simple so what is the function of this food vacuole what will happen here the complex substances which are present in that food are broken down into simpler ones which then diffuse into the cytoplasm they diffuse and that will make the system very uh, metabolic activities to undergo in that amoeba the remaining undigested material is thrown out you can see the stages the five four to five stages you should able to draw then how does the nutrition in paramecium again it is a unicellular but it is having a proper definite shape see in paramecium you can see here the paramecium yes you can see the cilia the finger like a projection which are present here are nothing but the cilia yes this and wherein you can see how the process is taking place here these are cell organelles which are present vacuole cytoplasm nucleus everything is present so now we just see in paramecium which is a unicellular organism the cell has a definite shape and food is taken at a specific spot food is moved to this spot by the movement of cilia so this movement of cilia are responsible for this food to enter into the uh, cell body paramecium cell body and which covers the entire surface of the cell 
is due to which they take in and due by the process of diffusion the waste material are thrown out you can see here how this uh, the food particles are oral glue is nothing but where the food particles are entering the cilia is helping it to move and you can see the cell mouth here that is cytosome where the food particles after getting enough energy these are the food vacuoles the green dots here and after uh, giving proper food to each and every in cell organelles then it is throwing out the waste here it is called as anal pore cytoproct and this is how the nutrition in parmesan is done then the most important that is elementary canal it is a human digestive system it is also known as elementary canal yes so what is this elementary canal the long tube you can see here from top to bottom that is from mouth to anus we call it as elementary canal see the long tube extending from mouth to the anus we call it as elementary canal you can see the all the structures here the 3d picture this is also figures the stomach liver then the you can see the pancreas between them the large intestine the coiled structure the small intestine and the anus yes then what is the function of saliva so we start our discussion from the saliva so what is the function of saliva in uh, digestion remember the first uh, the part in the uh, digestion the first process of digestion takes place within the mouth itself so the saliva helps <coughs> in the softening the food so the lining of this canal is very soft the food what we eat must be wetted means it will become wet to make its passage very smooth this is achieved by mixing the food with the saliva secreted by this salivary gland so salivary gland secretes a saliva and it also secretes an enzyme called as salivary amylase yes see enzymes in saliva see the saliva contains an enzyme called as salivary amylase that breaks down starch the food see what is the function of this salivary amylase present in saliva that break downs the complex uh, sorry uh, complex molecule into simple sugar that means a starch which is a complex molecule to give rise to simple sugar then what is peristaltic movement peristaltic movement is a wave like movement in, in of the oesophagus simple terms you can say our also figures or the food pipe that when the food enters it moves in the form of um, wave like movement yes so peristalsis is the contraction and the relaxation of the muscles or wave like movement of the muscles of the digestive tract to move the food to the digestive system yes then what as soon as the food enters into this stomach then the hcl is secreted then what is the function of the hcl in the stomach see the function of hcl that is hydrochloric acid is it makes the acidic medium which is necessary for the action of the enzymes that is gastric enzymes like pepsin okay see remember this pepsin is a protein digesting enzyme and as soon as the food enters into the stomach it makes the stomach acidic medium why this acidic medium is required in order to um, make the action of this uh, gastric enzymes like pepsin and this pepsin digests the proteins which is present in the food and this hcl also kills the harmful bacteria which are present in that stomach medium then uh, how is the inner lining of the stomach protected from action of acid what uh, why do not the acid corrode the inner surface of this uh, stomach because the mucus see remember the mucus protects the mucus or the uh, this is a semi liquid fluid which is uh, present in the layer of the stomach and you can see here mucosa in this diagram mucosa is nothing but the mucus sub mucosa wherein it uh, does not allow the action of hcl here see the mucus protects the inner lining of the stomach that means it is protected by this uh, inner lining from the action of this hcl acid then what is acidity you can see the burning pain like uh, uh, feel you get when you eat excess of food or when you don't eat food also sometimes you may lead to acidity and it is a condition where there is excess secretion of these acids that means the secretion of this acid takes place excess in gastric glands of the stomach and you feel acidity as we discussed in acid base and salts and acids are used like you know baking soda 
और एम जी ओ एच टॉइस दैट इज मिल्क ऑफ मैग्नीशियम मैग्नीशियम हाइड्रोक्साइड आर यूज एज एंटासिड टू गेट रेड ऑफ दिस एसिडिटी देन वॉट विल हैपन इफ म्यूकस इज नॉट सीक्रेट बाई दिस गैस्ट्रिक लैंड आज सपोज वी डिस्कस दैट द म्यूकस इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल टू जस्ट प्रोटेक्ट द इनर लाइनिंग ऑफ द स्टमक इफ म्यूकस इज नॉट सीक्रेटेड बाई दिस गैस्ट्रिक ग्लैंड बाय योर स्टमक ग्लैंड इट विल लीड टू एरोजन एरोजन मीन्स इट विल कॉज द एरोडिंग ऑफ दैट लेयर ऑफ द इनर लाइनिंग ऑफ द स्टमक कॉजिंग एक्सेसिव एसिडिटी एंड स्टमक अल्सर्स एंड डिसकम्फर्ट ऑफ द म्यूकस डिसकम्फर्ट इट टेक्स प्लेस एज द म्यूकस प्रोटेक्ट द इनर लाइनिंग ऑफ द स्टमक फ्रॉम द एक्शन ऑफ एच सी एल सो वॉट हैपन्स वेन दिस म्यूकस इज नॉट सीक्रेटेड प्रॉपरली देन दिस इट कॉजेस एक्सेसिव एसिडिटी अल्सर्स एंड डिसकम्फर्ट सो दिस इज द इम्पॉर्टेंट वन देन वाई डू हर्बी वर्स नीड अ लॉन्गर स्मॉल इंटरस्टाइन सी वी हैव सी इन द are these are herbivorous animals yes wherein they need very long uh, uh, digestive system and wherein humans or carnivorous or uh, omnivorous they are having the short digestive system or small intestine you can see yes but herbivorous eating grass needs a longer small intestine to allow the cellulose to be digested why because in order to digest this cellulose we need to have longer uh, small intestine but wherein we consume the indirectly the other organisms the carnivorous and omnivorous they need not to have a longer digestive system or small intestine see carnivorous have a shorter small intestine you can see the carnivorous they are having a shorter uh, small uh, intestine here and herbivorous they are, you can see they are coiled in many terms they are having larger small intestine see meat is easier to digest uh, that means the proteins they are very easy to digest hence carnivorous have a smaller small intestine or shorter small intestine yes then how are fats digested in our body how do these fats lipids oily substances they get digested in our body see fats are present in the form of large fat globules or some kind of some lipids you can say in the small intestine the small intestine gets a secretion in the form of bile juice see this bile juice is secreted from the liver and pancreatic juice from the pancreas see the bile salts from the river break down the large flat fat globules so how are the fat digested by the Uh, bile juice you can see uh, the bile juice which is secreted from the liver that makes uh, into smaller globules so that pancreatic enzymes can act on them easily then what is the function of this small intestine see small intestine this is the secretion from the liver remember as soon as the food enters into the small intestine the small intestine receives secretions from the liver and pancreas the liver secretes a bile juice which um, acts on the lipids yes that is the uh, oils and that makes the fat, fat, fat globules emulsified and where is the pancre pancreatic juice is secreted by the pancreas which digest the further proteins present in that food the small intestine is a site of complete digestion which is a site of complete digestion see the food gets completely digested in the small intestine wherein the all the carbohydrates proteins and the fats are completely digested so small intestine is called as a site of complete digestion then how is the acidic food received from the stomach made alkaline in small intestine see the food coming from the st uh, stomach is acidic as the hcl is secreted there wherein the food has become completely acidic and is made alkaline because the in order to in order that the pancreatic enzymes to act the food is to be made alkaline to act by the bile juice from the liver so the food coming from the stomach is acidic and it is made alkaline for pancreatic enzyme to act by the bile juice so who makes the food alkaline here the acidic food alkaline the bile juice makes the food alkaline because the pancreatic enzyme to act then what is the function of this bile juice secreted by the liver see the bile juice makes the food coming from the stomach alkaline the major function of the bile juice is to make the food which is coming from the stomach to be made alkaline alkaline means to base or less acid uh, content 
or uh, and it also increases the efficiency of the enzyme action by breaking down the fat into smaller globules or it emulsifies the fat and by breaking down the larger fat globules into the smaller ones then how would digestion of food be affected if the bile duct is completely blocked see suppose if the you can see this is a stomach here and the diagram is present yes and you can see the bile duct it liver this is you assume this part is a liver where in the bile duct along with the gall bladder is present this is duodenum which is a start point of the small intestine if the bile duct is completely blocked this bile duct you can see near the green here the green portion if it is completely blocked bile juice will not reach the small intestine yes this bile juice will not enter into the small intestine and the digestion of the fat will be affected then what is the function of the pancreas here see pancreas secretes pancreatic juice or pancreatic enzymes uh, we also uh, contain some enzymes called as trypsin for digesting proteins what uh, see pepsin is also digesting protein in the stomach but trypsin is a digesting it is an enzyme secreted by the pancreatic secreted by the pancreas in order to digest the further proteins in the small intestine it also produces the enzyme called as lipase yes for breaking down of emulsified fat the smaller globules again they get uh, uh, breaking down so that the complete digestion takes place so pancreatic enzyme secretes two uh, enzymes namely trypsin for digesting proteins and lipase for breaking down the emulsified fats then what is difference between pepsin and uh, trypsin see pepsin acts in the stomach it is a digestive enzyme and it is uh, secreted in the small intestine it is pancreatic enzyme and pepsin acts in the acidic medium because stomach is uh, acid I stomach contains acid trypsin acts in the alkaline medium yes then how would digestion of food be affected if pancreatic duct is blocked that means if there is a no pancreatic duct then what will happen to the process of digestion see the pancreatic duct is completely blocked pancreatic juice will not reach the small intestine remember the pancreatic juice is, uh, contains the enzymes that is trypsin and lipase that will not reach the small intestine and the digestion of the carbohydrates and the proteins will be affected that means carbohydrates and the proteins will not be digested properly then what are the, the functions of this intestinal uh, juice that means small intestine then what is the major output of this uh, small intestine uh, uh, that means what is the final uh, output of this digestion you need to remember that is we together we call it as intestinal juice small intestine secretes juice so that we call it as intestinal juice see the enzyme in the intestinal juice converts proteins to amino acid remember the final stage of this is the proteins are directly converted into the amino acids then second it converts the intestinal juice converts the complex carbohydrates into glucose and converts fats into fatty acids and glycerol these three points are very important see this is the final process of digestion by the intestinal juice wherein the proteins are converted into the amino acids the carbohydrates are converted into glucose and fats are converted into fatty acids and glycerol this is the final output of this digestion then what are villi see these villi are present in the stomach that is small intestine not in the stomach they are present in the small intestine yes remember this they are the inner uh, they are the inner lining of the small intestine has numerous finger like projection the tread like or the finger like projection those finger like projections we call it as a villi see this villi are nothing but to absorb the food nutrients present in the food see what will do we do is the inner lining of the small intestine has a numerous finger like projections that we call it as a villi which increases the surface area of absorption of the food that means the more uh, amount of food is absorbed by those villi as the villi are richly supplied with the blood vessels that means they are consists of 
millions of blood vessels in it which take the absorbed food to each and every cell of the body that means the food what the food in the nutrients in the food what the villi are absorbed it is taken to each and every cell or each and every part of the body so that is the important uh, importance of this villi you can see the um, single uh, villi here how it is see the villi is uh, the finger like wherein you can see the red and the blue mm, uh, color where in the red is the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood and those are called as capillaries and uh, thin thin walls just one cell thick you can see where in the food which passes through this will be absorbed by this blood sufficiently yes then what are the final products after digestion of carbohydrates and proteins see the final products produced after the digestion of carbohydrates is glucose I, that means carbohydrates is converted into glucose and proteins are converted into the amino acids these are the final products of the digestion then absorption of digested food in small intestine then what is the role of this uh, small intestine here see digestion of the food is completed in the small intestine so we call small intestine as a site of complete digestion and this inner lining of the small intestine has a number of finger like projections we call it as villi which increases the surface area for the absorption of the food that means they absorb the sufficient food and walls of the small intestine have blood vessels that means they consists of uh, numerous blood vessels for carrying the absorbed food to different parts of the body then we shall see the difference between autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition see food is synthesized from the simple inorganic raw materials such as carbon dioxide and water auto means they prepare their own food autotrophic nutrition they depends on other for their food that means food is obtained directly or indirectly from autotrophs this food is broken down with the help of enzymes presence of green pigment chlorophyll is necessary for autotrophic nutrition but for heterotrophic nutrition no pigment is required in this type of nutrition food is generally prepared during day time food can be prepared at all the times all green plants and some bacteria have this type of nutrition all plants uh, all animals sorry all animals and fungi have this type of nutrition then absorption of the digested food in small intestine yes already we have discussed this then this is the last uh, topic that is dental caries the extra information see dental caries is the tooth decay that uh, causes gradual softening of this enamel you can see the dark uh, portion here and uh, the cavity it is called and the dentine it is caused when the bacteria acts on the sugars and produce acid that softens or demineralizes the enamel enamel is the cavity forming sector where you can see the upper portion of this jaw it happens when the masses of bacterial cell together with the food particles stick to the teeth to um, from this uh, to in order to form this dental plaque yes so this completes the process of uh, complete di digestive system both in uh, 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 the process of digestion in uh, human we have discussed amoeba and parmesium and photosynthesis in plants thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please comment sh share subscribe and like thank you so much